Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 1, Episode 5 of School Spirit. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, after the revelation of last episode, Claire has something to do with all this. Obviously, she's connected to Anderson, and we actually finally get context about the fact is. Her and Maddie actually were friends at one point in time until middle school. Basically, they were neighbors, so it was like easily friendship stuff. But Maddie was dealing with a lot of stuff with her mom. Her mom wasn't really in a good place at the time in one particular day. And Claire came over to her house because Claire's parents were going at it. And she needed somewhere to stay. But Maddie, I guess, was too caught up in what was happening to her and probably didn't even realize she didn't realize until later on what like what Claire was kind of going through and it's like it's also like I can't help her I was dealing with my own situation I didn't even know how to handle like my mom being kind of off the way I was was the way she was her parents got split or she lived with her dad for like a year her mom got remarried to a pretty like powerful guy now uh, but then, like, when she came back in, like, her middle school year, she just saw through Maddie. So, and they hadn't spoken to each other since. So, that's what makes the whole, like, you and Xavier, her and Xavier cheating uh, behind Maddie's back even more cutthroat. Because it's like, maybe Claire did do that on purpose because it was, like, a thing of, like... What Simon said, I think there was validity to it, that I think she does hold probably a lot of psychological scars because of that. I mean, Maddie has her own scars because of everything with her mom, so I'm sure Claire, and Claire probably, like, associates a lot of blame on Maddie, or maybe it's just she feels bad because if something happened to Maddie, we were really good friends at one point in time, and... Maybe she still doesn't know everything that Maddie was going through at that time. And it's like we had a lot of common ground with complicated family life, family home stuff. But neither one of us talked to each other about it. And just so much time went by of us not talking. It just made it harder and harder for either one of us to reach out. And maybe on some level, especially if what Claire is mixed up in might have had anything to do with Maddie. Maybe she's even maybe she even feels worse about it. I don't know. Like she kind of gave uh, Maddie the stank eye like when she was about to meet up with um Xavier so I don't know maybe maybe it's what Simon said was true that there is some validity to like oh she's been holding on to like a lot of resentment towards Maddie and maybe that's extra reason why her and the whole Xavier thing happened or um I mean maybe if something did happen to Maddie especially because of all this she does feel some regret now I, I don't know we won't really know we know Claire's dealing with a lot she's definitely not uh, at, at, like her normal self this episode, but that's mainly because Anderson got caught and she doesn't know if he's spilling the beans because she even went to try and talk to Anderson and he's like, dude, all I told the T, all I told them was I, I basically embezzled that money I was supposed to use for the uniforms to pay off my dad's debts. Because we do know, like, cause he had talked to Maddie about it in the past about a dad who was kind of a drunk and everything. So he probably racked up a lot of debts. And so Anderson isn't necessarily a bad guy. Once again, he's a, he's a good guy who did bad things or a decent guy at the very least has showcased that. Cause my thing was like, could it be like a, was there, I'd even thrown it out there last episode. Could it be a thing of him and Claire? Cause I was like, right, you can do good things. Does that completely discount? You can do bad things, but does that discount all the good stuff that you might have ever said or done? He was there for Maddie, which was good, but I also posited like, hey, could it be that he was up to some nasty stuff, especially if there's something between him and Claire? But it's like, no, where it is a transactional thing that he was probably getting paid to, could we find out like Claire just copy and paste it the same report over and over again for every paper and she got an A for it. That's how she kept her grades up. Now, either that was something her dad was aware of and pushed all that or Claire used her own money to pay him off to keep, because it seems like she's, we know she has a complicated family circumstance. So maybe, I mean, her parents got divorced. So maybe that rectified it, but maybe it's still an issue, but she's trying to get to a really good college. So she needs to pass. So maybe she's trying to pad her like grades, her, um, um, her GPA and stuff like that. So she can get to a really good college and just get the hell out of this town. She was out of the town for like a year before coming back. So maybe there's something along those lines. So. She's definitely got some kind of secrets because this is all eating away at her. The moment uh, Xavier's dad, who once again is a sheriff, rolled in, it's like it, she got super nervous, even to the point she started throwing up because she's like, maybe they're going to find out. Because it's not just about them finding out that she's worried about it, it's specifically her 
family. I think she's referencing her dad dad and not even her stepdad. So she's like, yeah, my dad can't find out about this because we don't know which family is supporting the school, whether it's Claire's mom, whether it's Claire's dad or, you know, Claire's stepdad, or it could be a combination of all three. But yeah, later on, Simon, Xavier, and Nicole all got a video that it's like, yo, this is a... Claire making some deal with Anderson. And the timing is interesting that all three of them got sent it at the same time. Now, because we know Nicole might be up to something shady, it could have easily been her recording the video, figuring there was something up, and she just happened to pretend like she got it at the same time. But we still don't know who actually recorded the conversation. But now we know, right, there. I mean, Simon is saying that could be Claire's motive because initially they didn't really know what her motive would be potentially. And it's like Claire being the queen bee that she is doesn't necessarily mean she's fully capable of murdering Maddie. But um, this whole situation, if they thought she was the one that recorded it, I mean, that would also explain Maddie's phone getting taken and replaced by blank. Uh, it's because they might have thought she legitimately had the video evidence. So Claire might have thought it was Maddie when it wasn't. Let's not also forget, there's still the fact is, Maddie still has blank spots in her memory up to her death. So, there there could be something in that. Maybe she did do it because she, she doesn't remember any of that. So, she she could have done something, but I, I don't know. Because that might also explain that why she was still defending Anderson. Because she might not remember she found out something sal uh, salacious like that about Anderson. But it could be it wasn't her. But the biggest question is, who could it have been? Part of me wonders... Because whoever it was had to have, like, tie to know to send it to Nicole, Xavier, and Simon, people who are looking into Maddie's circumstances. So, not less is one of Claire's, like, like squad who did it because they thought it was effed up. Because I'm, like, I'm trying to think, is there anyone else student-wise we've gotten to know that could have done that? I guess the, the counselor... That uh, Maddie was close to the one her mom was talking to this episode. She might have done that. Not the grief counselor, but the counselor um, that was helping hand out flyers later. Like her, like she was pretty tight with like Maddie. She wants to talk to Simon and stuff like that. Not the grief, once again, not the grief counselor, but just like the, the I guess the school's regular counselor. I think, I, well, she's also, a, she's a teacher because she isn't just a counselor, but she kind of plays that role um, a little bit. But maybe her Maybe Emilio might be in like the middle of some of this too, just because of like he might have been the one who ended up recording that. I don't know. Cause like other than like Simon, Claire, Nicole, and Xavier, like there's no one amongst like the living cast that's like students that we've really followed other than those four that we've really spent any time with. So that's why it's got to be a character we're not that. Maybe it's a character that's kind of been in the background that we haven't really like. Or once again, it could, like I said, be one of the adults. Because initially, Simon thought it was uh, like the janitor, Mr. South. But it's like, no, he was recording video evidence for the school about the spot where potentially Maddie's, well, Maddie's blood was found. Like she potentially died. There was all this graffiti and some pretty, some effed up stuff there in some regards so it's like yeah i was just i didn't want you to know about that simon so that's why he was kind of hiding in the video when simon went to visit him earlier so it's still unclear who's sitting the video at this point in time i mean all of this has put maddie in this very complicated spot and when it comes to the investigation because she saw her mom show up at the school and her mom was sober trying to keep everything in line it's like right maddie's backpack was found at this house so like hey i think i need to now I'm thinking about it too, really quickly. It could be like the sheriff or something recorded that. But, you know, why would you send it to your own son and everything? Because I was about to say, whoever had that might have been like, because I was about to say, whoever it was, maybe the sheriff originally recorded it, maybe. And then, like, whoever it was might have wanted that as blackmail, but now is going to use it uh, to help our trio find out what happened to Maddie. You know, I, I don't know. But it's circling back. Maddie, um, saw her mom talking to her teacher and it's like her mom's like so sober she's together especially because she feels like right i failed maddie so at the very least i need to make sure when maddie comes back because she's going to come back like the fact is i gotta make sure everything's in order so that you know it's like i i, I gotta step up to be a mom she's like i know i haven't been the best mom of the year a uh, month or even day but i, I want to make it up to maddie i want to show her that i have changed and i'm heading in a positive direction and that in itself makes maddie wonder should i really like should we be investigating 
dating anymore, Simon. Like, if the truth comes out about my to my mom about what happened to me, she's gonna come. She's gonna come undone. Like, and she's making good progress. If if the mystery of what happened to me keeps her on up and up and keeps her in a stable position, because Maddie's like, I haven't seen her sober in so long. I've forgotten what normal on my for my mom looks like because of that. And so she doesn't want Simon to investigate anymore because it's like, right, the truth is just gonna hurt her anymore, and it might send her spiraling. And I love how that like parallels with Wally's story because Wally, every like homecoming game, he goes and he kind of plays along and he gets super pumped about it because his parents come every year, except for his dad. His dad hasn't come for the past 15 years, but it's yeah, because like Wally like died on a field. He was even saying like, yo, if only I could have died like across the yard line, like across the goalpost, because if I did, maybe my, you know, I could have got one last W for my mom. Cause we end up finding out Wally, he's like, yeah, I like football. It's fine. Um, I don't really mind it and I'm good at it. But the only reason why he is so hardcore about football, cause his mom was, his mom wanted it to be his opportunity to potentially like go to college with it as a scholarship and also like, you know, make it big and like, you know, maybe the NFL or something like that. But, um, Wally never really, really cared about it. And it's cause you look at him and you're like, oh, he's like your stereotypical jock and stuff. He's super, into but it's like, no, like. As we see that there are layers behind everyone, you know, that we've kind of gotten to know him, Charlie and Rhonda. I mean, we already knew there were kind of layers to Charlie from the very beginning, but obviously the same thing with Rhonda and the same thing with Wally. That the fact of the matter is he only shows up all these years, every year, because his mom keeps showing up, but he doesn't do it for himself. He does it for her. He even thinks, like, that's why I'm doing all this. He even suggests, like, the empty seat she has isn't for her his dad that's not there. God was thinking like, oh, did your dad die? He's like, no, he just stopped coming 15 years ago. But your mom, he's like, my mom probably leaves that empty seat for me. And it's this interesting conversation between him and Maddie where like they really got to like open up around each other. Cause I don't think Maddie expected to kind of open up the Wally and Wally finds it so easy to talk to her about this stuff because they both have complicated family circumstances in some regards, especially when it comes to the mom club where it's like the night he died, he was like on the bench. He was like, yeah, coach is going to put me in later. But her mom, his mom was like, nah, tell him to go ahead and put you in. You're the rock star of this. And it was just kind of like Wally remembering that being like, right. Maybe that's extra reason why his mom shows up because it's the honor of Wally. But part of me almost wonders, is there some part of guilt because she's the one that really, really pushed it. And maybe on some level, she did believe he loved it, not realizing he only did it for her sake and maybe that's why she shows up because it's a combination of like this is the game that Wally loved but maybe on some deep-seated level she might feel guilty thinking like oh I pushed my son into it he was the one on the bench I'm the one that pushed him to get the coach to put him back into the game and maybe things wouldn't have played out that way you know but Wally takes off the jersey and I think for him it's like for the first time in a long time he's making strides going forward it feels like and I think that's so interesting that you had that whole situation with Martin, who um, Dr. Martin's looking around. He's kind of like, what's up with like Charlie? Charlie's so um, like focused on writing in his notebook and stuff. He's like, I'm just worried that everyone's going to be taking a step back. It feels like for the first time in a long time, it feels like everyone is taking a step forward. Maybe even Rhonda, because I'd say like Rhonda's being more like, oh, I want to be able to move on. Like her conversations with Martin, uh, Dr. Martin last episode, I think really solidified that for her. And she was just like, right, I, I want to I want to take these steps forward to try and find a way to move on. Like, I think all of them are moving because of Maddie's opinion, because I think Dr. Martin's been helping them in his own right, but I think he's almost kept them stagnant. And I don't know if that's going to be like, oh, that was actually on purpose. Or he, I think maybe he legitimately does think he's helping them. But I do believe Maddie's kind of helping each and every one of them move forward in their own way, too. The Rhonda of it all is going to be really interesting. Obviously, she's not telling Dr. Martin anything. But it's like, no, no, I'll keep a close eye on Maddie. And it's like, maybe being around Maddie might end up helping her to be able to find a way to move forward. But I think we see progress with uh, Charlie because Charlie's writing his letter to Emilio. He's like, yeah, I'm on the 12th draft. And it's probably even further along in, in his drafts. Uh, this time, but he, she, for the first time, Wally was like, yeah, for the first time in like forever, I finally felt free, kind of, you know, not at, behold it to like my mom and everything, like the pressures that he's basically had on himself for these past few decades about that kind of like, yeah, doing stuff for his mom. It's even, cause even Maddie's like, you don't, you, you're dead. So you get to 
just do whatever you want to. But for him, it's like, I've been doing this. I've basically had this define me for so many years that like, I don't know if I can really do anything else, but I think he's now willing to give it a try. And the whole conversation with Maddie had, um, with, uh, with, uh, how, it, how it affected Maddie with the, uh, conversation with Wally, whereas Wally was like, cause she was like, how do you mess up it is that like, I want to keep my mom from finding on what really happened to me because it's the only way to keep her sober. And he's like, well, what about me who keeps showing up at the field where I die playing the game that I die, you know, just so I can keep my mom happy. But it's like, at the end of the day, you aren't coming back, Maddie. And that's the thing. Like, your mom, yeah, this will keep her going for a while, but eventually, like, how long can it last? Like, it, that's always that complicated thing of, is no, because some, you, you have the right to know, because the not knowing is the worst thing, but knowing ends up being the real kick in the teeth, too. But it's like, is it better for someone to know the truth? Because she would hope it's a good thing, but it can turn into a horrible thing. It can turn into a guillotine above you, because in Maddie's mom's case, she'll keep holding out that hope forever and she'll keep expecting Maddie to walk through that door when in actuality Maddie won't I mean she was there hanging out flyers and stuff like that and then ultimately like not seeing Maddie there broke her heart and that's going to happen over and over again she's going to get our hopes up and then they're going to get crashed and dashed for the rest of her life and that's not fair to her so ultimately Maddie talks to Simon it's like good or bad my mom deserves to know what happened to me because it's the only way she's going to be moving forward because now she realizes like right I'm exactly like Wally Wally spent these decades holding on to stuff for his mom's sake and now it's like I'm doing the same thing I gotta allow myself as well as my mom the ability to move on past this because I am going and I'm not coming back and I don't want my mom spending the rest of her life getting her hopes up just to have them dash holding Holding on to something that won't be true. We all know it's not true because I'm not coming back. I'm gone. And there's no one doing that, you know? There's a whole situation with uh, Xavier. Um, obviously, there's still beef between him and Simon. Uh, because, and even Nicole kind of calls Simon out where it's like, right, I invited Xavier to Horicon because I asked you to come along with me, but you said no. They haven't been on the same wavelength because, once again, they're both trying to handle the Maddie situation, but... Nicole's handling it one way because Simon has to keep her in the dark about everything because it's like, I can't tell you I'm seeing Maddie because you're just going to think I'm crazy and that's just going to be a whole list of issues and it's just going to get in the way of the investigation. So that's kind of pushing him further away from Nicole. They both want the same thing. It's just the way they're handling it. Her kicking it with Xavier handling things, him kicking it with Maddie, you know, and keeping that all to himself is kind of pushing Simon away. And for Nicole, it feels like in a time where one of their friends is one of their best friends is missing. She's losing her other friend in the process. And like the only person she really had to confide in is Xavier. So that has kind of made it rough. But I think Simon is coming around to at least seeing that Xavier is there in a capacity that no one else is. I mean, even before Nicole, Xavier's the one that ended up reaching out to Maddie's mom. He's there helping out, trying to, I mean, you know, because they're both, because also she doesn't look at him the same way like maybe Nicole or Simon does, where it's like, oh, you're this terrible person. But it's because they both made mistakes when it came to hurting Maddie, and they both want to try and make up for him. So that's why she's like, I'm not, she even said, like, I'm in no place to judge you because I've hurt Maddie, you know? So, and I think that's kind of something they bond over, both wanting to do better and be better for Maddie's sake. Um, then there's also the Nicole of it all. It de I was like, halfway expecting like the way she was acting shady, kind of looking behind herself when she opened the trunk. They didn't show us inside the trunk, but I was like, is it going to be the backpack? Because when Xavier went to that house to find Maddie's backpack, someone had stolen it. It seemed like it might be Claire because when Claire shows up at the game, she was wearing a hoodie and stuff. So, but part of me was wondering, like, are we going to find out was actually Nicole? Um, part of me wonders, are we going to find out there's something between Nicole and Claire? Something I'd wondered, and you know, maybe this is me reading way too much into it, most likely. I had, I had wondered, like, whether or not there was, I mean, because I figured Simon might have actually had a thing for Maddie and Xavier was kind of the issue, but I was now I'm almost, I'm just, you know, reading into things, I'm like, could it be that Nicole had a thing for Maddie and that's kind of an issue, so... I don't know, like, the fact that she's so tight-knit with, like, Xavier now, I mean, obviously before finding out about him cheating on her, on, on Maddie, but it could have just been, like, no, you're, like, dating one of my best friends, so, like, I'm gonna, you know, hand, I'm gonna, like, be as happy for you and treat you as nicely, especially at that time when she kind of felt like she had no one because she didn't really have Simon at that time when she's kind of dealing with everything on her own without Simon there to kind of, like, be there to kind of 
help with that as well because he's dealing with things on his own, especially with the whole Maddie of it all. So it wasn't even just Simon, but obviously it was Maddie's idea about how to handle this. So the plan is to use Xavier to get close to Claire to potentially find out if she's mixed up in all, or she is mixed up in all of this, but to what capacity and to what length. So it's like, hey, let's go to prom together, a uh, homecoming together, and I'm sorry about everything. And Maddie's the one that told Simon exactly what to say. And obviously it was heartbreaking because even she's like, yeah, it's gotten easier to be around seeing Xavier, especially now she's like 95% sure he didn't kill her. It's still hard, but it's not as hard as it was before. But being it, having to say that, because probably saying those words to him also was held some truth to it where it's like, it's okay. Like probably all the things she wants to say to uh, Xavier and plus the stuff she wants Xavier to say to her. But now he's having to say it to Claire to draw her in, you know, so. And especially because Claire feels probably like the wall's closing in. She wanted to talk to Xavier because she needed someone to talk to in this time. And now it's the perfect timing because now it's like, right, she, her, she feels like her back's against the wall and... She needs someone in her corner where she feels like she, because she can't talk to her squad. She's so she's kind of keeping that all to herself, and that's kind of the point of maybe she'll end up confiding in Xavier. At the very least, he'll be in close enough proximity to find out what she might be hiding. So, there's also the fact is that Wally asked uh, Maddie to the the homecoming. He's like, no, no, I mean we could just go as friends, but he's like, don't feel obligated. She's like, yeah, sure, and it's like he's getting super excited about. It. It's like because I felt like in this episode, I was like, are they setting up a Wally and Maddie thing? And kind of felt like it i'd almost wondered by the end of this episode like would wally kind of finally move on because of maddie and maybe in some shape or form sh he will maybe by the end of everything and that's going to be like a thing of like i mean most likely problem uh, I'll, I'll put it like a 50 50 like maybe he will they'll, they'll make that story beat of he'll be able to move on or maybe they won't i don't know maybe even uh, charlie and um, Rhonda and Wally will all end up moving on and Maddie's the one that's kind of stuck playing the role of kind of Dr. Dr. Martin helping other people move on. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But I, I, I talked about it earlier, but I feel like I kind of moved away from it. It definitely feels like Nicole might be hiding something. She might have Maddie's backpack, but it definitely seems like they're setting it up of like, oh, was it Claire? Does Maddie have, I mean, does Nicole have some secrets of her own? Like some stuff that even Nicole or Simon isn't aware of? We'll ultimately have to wait to see. There's a there's a lot of stuff to keep in mind as we go forward. I'm very excited to see where the next episode ultimately ends up taking us going forward with all of this. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.